What is good? We're back and we're ready to roll. Uh, oh, fresh, fresh crack. crack. A little throwback. I'm going to have a little throwback episode here where we're just going to got a couple topics and we're just going to roll. So saddle up, partner. Oh, even the air, the, the, the old time air horn. Old so, time. Everything's old time now. Yeah, we are not too far, about two weeks as we speak today uh, from the NFL draft, right? Uh, Mm -hmm. And, you know, we've been over rookies. We've done rookie mocks. We got some other good stuff coming out for you, a final rookie mock, and we got final rankings and all sorts of other things. But, you know, you don't want to get too far, too out in front of your skis before the actual draft happens because we're going to get inundated with new information. We're kind of in that spot. But we thought it was a good time to maybe go back and look at two years ago and three years ago draft class and you know the 21 22 class and just kind of just give you an overview of who came from that classes some rounds and then if we're in or out on those guys third year breakout second year breakout all that kind of jazz uh and i just kind of refresh your memory with who came out of what draft and i think it's a good exercise before we get into um this 24 class and then me and austin will be doing a redraft of the 23 class and some cells that maybe have you nervous for uh you know guys that might lose value at the nfl draft so be sure to like subscribe comment below so you can get all that right to your little fingertips big d how's it going jazz. good uh doing good man hanging out in the the west coast you know the rice is cooking oh whoops a little a little too early on that one um <laughs> The, sorry about the Rashi Rice joke there. That's mm, uh, too mm. early. No one died, but uh, too yeah. early. Well, we can um, kind of kick it off with that. And sure. you know, there was some Patreon stuff. You know, people love to comment. Oh, it's like, well, let's, ever, so let's just still just wait, man. It, we we have no idea what's about to happen and transpire. If you want to, if there's a little dip to buy, I guess you could buy it. Other than that, it's just, just don't do anything. Just yeah. relax. Hold. Um, I'm, it's hold. not my job to morale police or actually police anybody and everybody right. likes to get all up in arms about things and it just let it all let them all let all the cards fall so yeah it's kind of the, really the only thing i have to say about that the news today was six or seven different counts seven eight. i think different eight eight counts do yeah. i hear nine do i yeah. hear, no. um nine counts against uh rice and nine counts against the other driver i think the moral of the story already i'll tell you right now i could tell you with absolute 100 percent conclusion do not rent two sports cars let one of your friends drive <laughs> and then race down the freeway like don't do it like yeah. I, I just i mean regardless of your um your your net worth or, or who you are um go yeah. go rent a racetrack don't, don't yeah. race down the right freeway, but, unless this you know? is a rough riders video just don't do it yeah you know yeah exactly unless you rent it out the freeway for Was that you Jermaine know, for Dupree video from back in the day <laughs> there it is yes got that gold tank like master p or something yeah i don't uh, even know what what who we're allowed to talk about these days with all these diddy issues so you know everybody might be dirty at this point yeah you got to be careful when you diddy that's that's for sure gotta watch out for the diddler yeah so we'll see man i mean i think that's uh you know again uh, outside of rashid rice put that aside for a second we are talking you know past drafts but i mean just drafts in general right this is okay here's another piece to fall what are the Mm -hmm. kansas city chiefs now going to do in the draft you know what is you know um obviously that probably a positive for hollywood ish but but still it's just from a draft perspective it's like now what now right. now what are they going to do and and by in two weeks from now i don't know if we're going to have a lot more you know we as the general public will have a lot more knowledge of uh you know, how severe or yeah. not severe or you know what 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 not but i can guarantee you that the, the chiefs uh the chiefs probably will have a pretty good indication of um the, at least the path that it's going from from their own internal investigations right. and and have a have a plan for their draft so um so, you know, Chief Chief Nation, another round two wide receiver coming your way, I think. I don't know. We'll <laughs> or, I mean, maybe even 31st. I, I think oh. even before this, there was a really good possibility of that. Yeah, um, so, yeah I do too. Um, I don't think that has any, you know, some people will automatically get on their jump to conclusions, Matt, and uh, say, well, there mm-hmm. m- must be something big coming down. It's like, well, I, th- I think I think that was 
probably already in the plans for the most part because they it's only a one-year deal with Marquise and Travis Kelsey's 34 and married to or dating a billionaire. So um, yeah. life can't get much better for him. Um, <laughs> no. So anyway, all right, let's get to these drafts. All right. All right, so we'll, we'll start with the 21 draft. Or do you want to start with the 22? Let's start 21. Let's go 21. 21, let's, yeah. Let's, let's take it back. Let's go back to the future. Yeah, so in the first round, we had Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, Justin Fields, Mac Jones. Those were your 1 through 15 pick. And we've seen plenty of graphics of that, of being basically the only real starter at this point is Trevor Lawrence, and some people have questions about that. I, I, I don't. I think Trevor's right. fine. Is he living up to expectations? No. Does that make him a bust? No. Um, I think, again, people get too aggressive with how they throw that word out there. But by all accounts, Trevor Lawrence has been a pretty solid quarterback and he got the shaft of year one and we went to the Jags. Like yeah. it's Patrick Mahomes, Patrick Mahomes, if he went to that Jacksonville Jaguars team, probably not. Um, uh, you know, not saying he wouldn't be better, but just, you know, right. Right system, right scheme, right people, right personnel to mold. Um, so you know, Zach Wilson, not a ton of hope for Trey Lance. We still have some hope, right? We just, we haven't even, maybe at some time in the next two years, we could maybe see him play. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, so I still, still be interested to roster Lance in a deeper, in a deeper deal. And then Justin Fields, I think we'll, we'll see the field as early as September or at probably some point in this season. How do you feel about Fields? Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely, I definitely think that Fields can outplay Russell Wilson, um, at least from what I've seen uh, last year uh, with with Russ and with with some coaching. So I, I do think he's going to challenge uh, Wilson on the field this year. I, I don't think he'll, you know, unless something unbelievable happens, I don't think he's going to win out because I, you know, I do think they want to give Russ the chance being being the veteran and and being Tomlin, but. Um, but yeah, I, I could see I, I could see that making the switch and you know, um and then next year I, I think it's a one year deal, right? If I remember yep. right. Uh, uh, yeah. Or two year. Um, I can't remember. I think sure. for some reason he's there next year as well. So um but yeah, well, I'm I think I'm, if they pick I'm, up the fifth year, maybe. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. He's on his fourth year and they have the option for the fifth. Um for, for me, I mean I think I've seen enough from Fields to say that um Last year, when I was watching the, you know, we we went on the ast the astronaut there for a while with Dobbs. We, you know, there was some mm -hmm. there was some quarterback play last year. You know, uh, when when Burrow went down, you know, you had uh, Jake Browning. I mean, you've had there is a world where he may not get the starter option, you know, this next year, but he'll he'll be able to get in there and play. And I think he's good enough to be in the top 32 of the quarterbacks. Right. Will he get the opportunity from a contract side? I don't know. But to me, he's worth the risk just from a fantasy perspective because he's, you know, just like you talked about Trey Lance. Like, I'm not going to take a risk on Zach Wilson, even though he's, I don't know how old he is now, 21, maybe 22. <laughs> he's young, still has the big arm. But, you know, I didn't see enough there, but also – even if I did see some, I just don't, he's not the kind of quarterback that I would take a risk on where mm -hmm. Trey Lance and Justin Fields is, um, are because of their, their, you know, their legs and what they could mean to you in the middle of a season when they come, you know, when they get their opportunity and, right. and hopefully shine. So, yeah, I mean, like you said, I don't, I don't think we've seen the last of Fields. He could easily outplay Russ. The, the Steelers made an outstanding move there to kind of, you know, I don't even I can't say necessarily solidify the quarterback position, but they, they have two really good shots for for next to nothing. Um, and, yeah. you know, I don't, can't imagine that if they go into next year with fields and saying, hey, we're going to do something. I don't I don't imagine they'll pay him the twenty five million. It'll be sort of like a Jordan Love deal where, hey, we can extend you for a year. And I mean, it really could just play into Justin Fields ends up being the Steelers. I mean, franchise quarterback, you know, they yeah. they could really, you know. Hit at home, so I'm not scared of, of Justin Fields really. I mean, that's I think anywhere from from a you know that mid mid late second, I'd be still interested in in Superflex and trading mm -hmm. for um, Justin Fields because when he's on the field, I mean that he he's a he's a league winner. He can yeah. he can help you win championships. And the, yeah. the, the problem has always been how at your second stop, if it doesn't go well, once you're on the third stop, it's a little shaky. Uh, but right. What what a what a shot you, and stop you're gonna get, you know, here in, in Pittsburgh. So, 
I, I yeah, and I think there's 21 class is really similar in lots of ways, just from a general talent perspective and in, in what you've got uh, of this upcoming rookie class, yeah. right? You've got Trevor outside Lawrence. of the wide receiver depth. No, I'm sorry. I'm just talking about quarterback. Oh, we oh, just oh, look at oh, the quarterback oh. side yeah. of things at the, the top end of the draft. It's like Trevor Lawrence was the, you know, he was the number one dude, you know, Caleb Williams, he's the number one dude. Uh, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, you know, both super young, um, you know, or, or, and, or inexperienced in lots of ways. Um, Drake may inexperienced in lots of ways, Justin Fields, you know, doing his thing, you know, in the, at the collegiate level, uh, JD doing his thing at the collegiate level, both have mm-hmm. wheels, you know, not, and I'm not comparing them exactly apples to apples, but I'm just saying that right. the, the concept of the talent, um, and, and JJ yeah. McCarthy, JJ McCarthy Jones. is, is Zach Wilson. They look alike. Or, or, they, or Zach they, Wilson. Yeah, big, that's true big, too. Yeah. Big rise, uh, you know, kind of later. So yeah, it's just, it's just kind of interesting. And, and so the question will be, as we just went through the top half of this, you know, which quarterbacks would we like, which ones we would not. Is this going to be the year, this upcoming year, is this upcoming year going to be the year where we inject more talent into the quarterback? quarterback yeah. Because I think that's part of the struggle is we've had some retirement. We've, we're we banking on a lot of older players like an Aaron Rodgers, like a Kirk Cousins, because I think that there's just been this lull of either quarterback development, quarterback play, bad fits, whatever, whatever it is. I'm sure it's a perfect storm of all kinds of things, but it, it doesn't feel like – there's as many um, in the quarterback and the running back room. There doesn't seem to be as much injection in, in, of life, I guess, right. uh, uh, sticking around from from what I remember of years past anyway. So but uh, yeah, anyways, I digress. Sorry. No, that's a, that's OK. Um, yeah. And then, you know, Mac Jones bringing up the, the, the rear there. And I think that was, you know, poor development and just a, a crumbling, a crumbling ecosystem kind of around him. So he's going to go down to Jacksonville mm-hmm. and then we'll we'll see kind of where that goes in the following year, probably I, I think Mac Jones will eventually get a, a shot somewhere, somewhere rather, whether it's a, Hey, we need a bridge. Well, let's see what you can do or an injury. Um, I yeah. thought that was a good move by Jacksonville. If, if you're, if this year goes anything like last year, somebody would probably be interested in trading for Mac Jones in the middle of the season. Um, yeah. But you know, I think what, what you can take is that just a, a reminder of that, even though they're, those are all first round quarterbacks, even though they're all first top 15 quarterbacks, doesn't mean anything. You know, you have, yeah. you have one left right now that has for sure value and Justin Fields, a maybe um, you need them. You got to have them. And I like drafting them because they're a bridge to another quarterback. It's hard to make a quarterback deal in Superflex without having a quarterback involved, especially uh, one of the more uh, steady proven ones. It's hard to, you know, even now if I get, you know, if I get Drake may, I can, I can use Drake may to potentially get up to a quarterback that I, uh, like, um, yeah. so that's why I don't mind drafting him, but I don't necessarily, you know, want to go into the year with those quarterbacks that I drafted at least across my leagues. Um, so I think right. this is a good reminder of, you know, they're going, but it's, there's nothing guaranteed. And then when I think when we look at, you know, the wide receivers, then that went in the first round here, which is Chase Waddle Smith. Um, those those are all for the first round wide receivers from from that draft class. You know, all still very relevant, still very prominent. One of them is, you know, one of the top at their um, at their position. And Jalen Waddle has had some excellent sis- seasons. He just happens to have maybe one of the other best ones with him. And Devonta Smith, if AJ Brown never was available and got traded there, probably would be, you know somewhat like a like a number one in philly uh so just they just happen to have two alphas those two guys next to him so you know maybe some points for the 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 neighbor's crowd who's who wants to draft neighbors over the quarterbacks you know yeah yeah definitely um so that's or the odunze or the odunze crowd right uh not nearly as popular so um and then kyle pitts was obviously a high draft pick there still still a lot of love and still still holding value i think you know, for the most part with this class, it's not nearly as deep as what we're talking about. That wasn't a huge skill position class uh, right. per se. You know, there's all sorts of forgotten names on here. You know, Michael Carter still, I think, yeah, at the bottom of a, a roster and Kalen, uh, Kylan Granson and... Um, still on a couple of my taxi squads. Oh, sure. He's had, <laughs> he's had some spots here. Like, I like yeah. Kylan Hill as a late add there but you know was a was a i think he was a little bit of a, a butthead potentially there 
Mm -hmm. uh, but what we do have is is we had some some pretty good running backs that have that have helped you out and stood the test of time. Travis Etienne, Najee Harris being the big ticket items. Uh, those are your first rounders. And then you had Javante Williams uh, as a second rounder. Obviously served an injury, and then we have you know a couple of fourths with Stevenson and Chuba who have been helpful uh, at times, especially Ramondre, and then. Uh, some other guys, Gainwell, Mitchell, Elijah Mitchell, that is a little later, uh, Khalil Herbert in the sixth round, which I, I still have some faith in, uh, mm -hmm. but let's touch on some of these running backs in this class. And, you know, Najee's become, I think a huge buy at this point. Yeah. Um, and Travis Etienne even seems like maybe there's a, not nearly as much love and hype surrounding a, a bit of a down year not efficient in kind of what he was doing in the past year. So uh, I think there's a, a crack open. If you want to take a shot for ETN, I think the, the Jags probably bounce back a little bit more somewhere in the middle of how last season ended and last season started. Yeah. Uh, so what are your, what are your thoughts there? Cause uh, like I said, I think Najee's a, a definitely on the buy side of things for me uh, after, after Matt Canada was fired in week 10 weeks, 11 through 18 Najee Harris Average 18.75 touches to Jalen Warren's 13.5 touches. Now, yeah. is that going to be the same when um, Arthur Smith is in there? I don't know if we can count on that. But Najee also had a, was on fire the last three games of the season and was like really, really playing well. Stopped kind of doing as much dancing around and was kind of seemed to get the message of, hey, let's plan it and get up field. I thought we saw a good version of Najee at the end of the season and yeah. Arthur Smith coming from what we just saw in Atlanta. Um, I think the, this 10th round ADP ish where we, where we're seeing Najee Harris and the FFD ADP um, I think is, is very, very palatable uh, nine, five rather, sorry, RB 20. Um, but I, I, it's three straight thousand yard seasons with Najee. Um, yep. I think there's still some meat on that bone. I think they're still going to, give Najee a nice ride throughout this season. Uh, so still very much interested in Najee Harrison. The price has just come down to a very palatable uh, amount for me. So what are your thoughts on ETN and, and Najee Harris? Yeah, I mean, they're both buys for me. I think ETN is, uh, he has the ceiling to be a number one overall for at the running back position. And that is, uh, sounds a little crazy, but the way that that offense struggled in, in, uh, in Jacksonville and Duval, um, I, I think there's some room there for it to to improve um, even more so. I know uh, Doug Peterson, um, head coach there, kind of he's great at turning things around. We'll see if he can continue that and 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 maybe you know take some additional strides in the in the development there. But I, point being is the way that they used um, ETN this last year. I think that there's there's going to be better targets uh, for Trevor Lawrence in the wide receiver room, which also gives quality targets to your, your running backs. And so for me, ETN is, is a buy. Um, but I think Najee is the clear buy here just because of his cost. I mean, 10th round, ninth round, whatever that is, that's what uh, mid to late second, I think uh, in, in, I know it's not one for one, but it's somewhere in there, I think value wise. And yeah, I mean, if I could trade a mid to late second right now for Najee Harris in, uh, any format, but specifically Superflex tight end premium. I mean, I would I would do that all day and twice on Sunday. It's <laughs> just thinking that. But yeah, yeah I mean, jo Javante yeah. Williams, though, is the one that I'm kind of, eh, you know, uh, yeah. I, personally, I just like I don't I, I tried to I thought about selling them earlier in the year um, for like 107, 106, uh, you know, prior to do diving in and getting into this draft. Um I still am not necessarily against that because I just think it's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of risk there with him. I think there mm -hmm. is some floor, um, but I think just from the injury, from the change of direction in Denver, there's, there's just so much, there's so much risk in, in that for me personally, that, um, I wouldn't mind doing, you know, possibly a reroll or, or something or, or taking, I mean, taking Javante and figuring out what the price difference is between Najee or maybe it's, one for one. I don't know what the price, you know, again, I'm not sure what the price is at this point in the, in the wild market, but, mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, I, that, that would be, 
you know, if we're just talking about this class, that would be a move that I wouldn't mind doing is going from Javante to, to Najee for this next year because yeah, you, I feel like it seems Najee's like you could four. probably even get a little something on top. Our ADP is pretty close. We got uh, Javante at eight twelve and and Najee at uh, nine five, but I feel like generally you might be able to just with name cachet of Javante and and name hate with with. Uh, mm -hmm. Najee, you, you may be even get able to sprinkle a little something extra on top of that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Real quick, touching back on ET. I mean, we're, we're talking about a bad year and he was still RB three and PPR, you know, <laughs> yeah. I think right. it was, it's not, a, not really a bad year, but just not efficient with a lot of the stuff he did. The volume was, was pretty good. I, I also don't think Jacksonville used him in the best way and, and they had to improve right. that offensive line a little bit, which they, they, they seemingly are willing to do um, and have, have taken some shots at. So I like that. I, I like, I think ET's a very good player. Um, so I, if there was a buy window there, I'd, I'd be in, I'd, I'd buy him for, for that. Any of those late firsts in the super flex market. Um, yep. If, if possible. And I don't know if that's even, even quite possible if people are ready to get off him that much, but he's, he's in that 25, uh, year old range now, so you know people are gonna be looking at it next year. Oh, he's twenty six, and uh, yeah, oh. uh, but he he he's produced at a high enough level, like you said, to be to be an RB one. He has been an RB one, and and I'm in. I think that's a great point with with Najee there, uh, as far as uh, you know, buying for the mid to late second. I don't I don't hate that at all because he's somebody who can help you win. Now, obviously, it's it's if you're rebuilding, you don't want anything to do with Najee Harris, but if you're if you're on right. the way to competing. Uh, we, you know, he barely sniffed double digits until week seven last year. Uh, Najee had 11 points week four. And then until week seven, that was his first time in, in real in 15.8. Uh, and then he had a nice little run, 10, 15, 18, 4, 15, 9, 7, 1.3, and then 13, 24, 24 to finish the season. So slow start, nice middle, couple of bummer games in there. That's going to happen from time to time. And then a nice, nice finish. So. It's there with Najee. We've seen it with Najee. Uh, I, I like Arthur Smith coming in, and then Javante. I I would I would tend to agree. I think I like the idea of Javante Williams, but I never take him in these mocks that we're doing. Right. Um, I'm always a little. I see him and I'm I I click him in the queue, and he's up there, and I'm like, oh, Javante lasted another round. Oh, I should grab him, and then I'm like, ah, it seems it seems like there is quite a bit of risk there. Obviously, he was coming back from a really bad injury where I didn't even think we were going to see him for half the year last year, and we did, which is great. I just don't know how much I trust uh, Sean Payton moving forward with, like, saying that Javante is going to be our guy uh, here. If it's, you know, they have P. Ryan, they have McLaughlin, who, who can can do different things, um, all all in there. And it seems like, maybe, is, is Javante going to be your first and second down guy? Is that what he's, you know, is that what he's going to do for you? And, and then... In a year or two, we're going to move on, and maybe he never gets quite back to where he was. Uh, I did see that, you know, had 55 targets and 47 receptions last year. So that was Javante, that is, more, more than I had thought. Um, yeah. Didn't think there was a whole lot. But just in watching him last year, which he shouldn't have been, it didn't. he didn't look very effective. He didn't look great. Um, he had a couple games in there that were, that were okay. Uh, but it just looks like he was average run of the mill uh right. from, from what you were seeing from javante and 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 our adp right now like i said uh eighth round adp for for javante williams here um let me see what was exactly eight eight twelve so just going going real late like jonathan brooks or javante williams the, the unknown rookie with an acl i think i'll take the unknown rookie with the acl right at this point yep i right? agree um and you know, I, I, Blake Corum or, or Javante Williams. I mean, they're probably the same age. Um, actually, Javante was pretty young coming in, so Javante might even be uh, younger than him. But I'd probably take Blake Corum because uh, I know, I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure Corum. I have faith that Corum can come right in and be a plug and play, NFL style back. Um, and and I know Javante can be, but. It just seems like he could be stuck in a role that you don't like, and he's one more year, and, and we still haven't seen anything from him, and the bottom's fallen out. Where Quorum could come in and have a, a really nice rookie season, and and he'll be, you know, twenty five midway through the next season, so people won't like that, but um, probably could still uh, garner some shine from some people. 
Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, there's, you know, just Javante and, and and not necessarily Javante, like you laid out, Sean Payton. It's just, it's concerning the second half of the season. I can't, I can't remember if you had, I know he had the injury, obviously. I can't remember if something flared up or whatever, but just looking at his usage, it looked like it trickled down towards the end of the season. You know, his fantasy points were okay because of some touchdown help, but like he was getting like 39% snap percentage, 11 carries, 12 carries. 15 carries uh and you know obviously he was he, he he did have some targets in the passing game where you know Najee was getting like 27 carries 28 carries 20 carries you know mm-hmm. and so it's just i mean just comparing those two just from a usage perspective it just it, it's 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 concerning to me i think probably i would say if i had to bank on it williams has the higher upside because of the ppr play right the the catching ability um but i don't know i mean Najee can He's just a big dude, man. He, you know, if that offense is moving like um, more so than it had, was under O Canada, then um, you know the goal line opportunities, things like that. So I don't know. It's relatively even as far as I can see, and mm-hmm. uh, which means I would rather have Najee than than Javante as far as going forward. I think um and then the rest of the ba- oh I'm sorry no no it. I think I'm with you I think I'm with you yeah c- continue yeah and then the rest of the backs um you know Ramondre Chuba. Uh, Ken Gainwell went in this draft. Um, he was a fifth round. Ramonde mm-hmm. and, and Truba were fourth rounders. You know, um, Elijah Mitchell was a sixth round, and Herbert was a sixth round uh, conditional pick. Um, I mean, I, I I don't think I'm going out and buying any of those guys. Maybe Chuba. You know, I might sniff to to see where the value is, but they're all kind of in. You know, uh, at this point, uh, two weeks out from the NFL draft, I think they're in that that NFL veteran purgatory where I'm like, okay, I know who you are. I've seen what you could do. I'm going to wait and wait until the, after the draft to decide if I'm going to go get you as some of my running back help. I want to see if you survive through the, through the gauntlet. That is the, not just the NFL draft, but then the free, the undrafted free agent signings and the, the, the cuts that come during our, our camps and, you know, and why are the cuts important? Well, because when the cuts happen, then, teams also shuffle but i think that they last year they did the cuts different right it was all at once uh like week week three or week four i don't remember i can't remember they did a there's a different cut down procedure so maybe that'd be a little bit different but regardless those guys aren't on my radar personally if i have them i'm not looking to sell them unless i get something great but i'm not necessarily looking to ha- uh, to sell them but i'm i'm I, I also if i don't have them i'm not necessarily looking to get uh get on the the bandwagon at this point so yeah uh, I, w- I would say for, for me, for those guys, th- those are all guys that I'm interested in, you know, after we get in that 14th, 15th round of startups. Sure. Um, and and I'm, I'm taking swings. I think it's a good call with Chuba af- after the draft to see kind of where they go, what they do. Are they moving yeah. forward this first year with Chuba and, and Sanders and maybe take a stab on somebody late? I don't have the panthers picks in front of me but you know it would seem like chuba could have a decent role this year um elijah mitchell we know is a good player if if anything happens to cmc he doesn't have any value with a healthy cmc but god forbid anything happens to cmc you know mitchell could be a a, a, a real real big help there but 18th round pick of if he's hanging around that's where, he, where he's going right now for us so i would take him and herbert the same thing i think herbert's had some good some good play uh throughout his career so far but just now he's buried uh, uh, on the Bears for, yeah. you know, with Roshan and Swift and him. And, you know, Swift hasn't been the healthiest, um, you know, yeah. had, a, had a pretty good stint there with the Eagles for a year. And we don't know what's going on with Roshan. Uh, we, we, we like him, but we're not sure. So, you know, all those guys are guys I'd take swing on. And Ramondre Stevenson is a guy who I, I'm looking for a little bounce back this year. But we just... The situation is so unknown for what's going to happen exactly. in New England. Yeah. Um, I like the player. I think we can see somebody who was a little closer to the the twenty one or the uh, the the twenty two version rather than the twenty three version that we saw. Um, I think he can be a thousand yard back. He can be efficient. He's a pretty good pass catcher. He's pretty elusive. You know, he had 30, 30 runs of ten plus or more uh, in in twenty twenty two, and then only ten in in 23 you know right i don't think that he lost that much in in one season i think the patriots were just just so bad just across the board they they just were not executing it just seemed like 
everybody was fairly disconnected from what was going on. Uh, so we'll, yeah. we'll kind of see where they're at. You got Gibson coming in there and Ramondre. They draft a rookie quarterback. Um, I'm, I'm still very interested in Ramondre Stevenson. Uh, let's, let's check out the ADP real quick. 10, five. So, you know, Ramondre going in that same area as, as Corum, as Tony Pollard, as Deandre Swift, um, a little of about a round later than Najee Harris. Uh, what, what do you, any, any thoughts in general of, of guys that you would rather have than, than Ramondre there, or is Ramondre the choice? Um, you know, Swift, Ramondre, Mixon, Ramondre, Kamara, Ramondre, Corum. Let's see here. Or Najee. Is there, how are you feeling about a list of those running backs in that, you know, nine to 10 range? Yeah. I mean, I think I'm, I'm, I think he's probably in the middle of that list for me. I, I think uh, at, at this point, again, I think he may be a, if we're just talking about talent, I kind of like him a little bit better, but if we're talking about team build and, and what's, what is, ha- I mean, Mixon just signed that contract, right? Um, I don't, I think Najee's on his fourth year, I believe. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, three straight thousand yard teams. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It looks like New England has eight draft picks. Um, one, two, three, four, five, two, six, and a seventh. So, eh, you know, they they could do something there, but they're they've got some. They got a lot of holes. Some, yeah, they've got some buildings. So I think Ramondre would be safe. I think when I'm doing a startup he's probably a more attractive name to me again i think at this point um i would probably go with the people that have the uh that have the contracts um ahead of them just a little bit um but yeah but to me it's just what's the direction of the patriots going to be is this going to be just a kind of a mess of a year where they're figuring things out with the whole new regime um or will they come out here and really be fired up and kind of have a direction they may not be great but still a competitive team. You know what I mean? Like, like Arizona last year, like not, not, uh, they're, they're fighting to the death in every game, which they, I mean, to be fair, they, they did fight a good bit in a lot of those games last year. It just seemed like this is, this kind of is what needed to take place. Um, and we'll see how that shapes things. But, um, yeah, yeah, I I would say probably about the middle of the pack there. He's already 26 years old. So he is going to be playing for a contract here. Um, so, and I don't think he's gaining any value. So if you're looking at it that way, like, I don't think it really matters too much what he does. People are going to say, oh, he's 27 and he's Ramondre Stevenson. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you're looking at it that way, then, then no, then I'd probably, you know, go to those younger backs and, and, and like you said, re-roll. Should we jump over to the 2022 class or you want to touch on, um, a couple more guys? No, I think we could jump over. I, I was just going to compare him. I, I think Stevenson can have a James Conner esque right. career arc t- as well. You know, I like agree. He, um, so, so I just wanted to because uh, Conner is twenty eight, Stevenson's twenty six, and I, I feel like he's kind of going down that same career path where it's like really good, then team struggle, he struggles, everybody struggles, and then he's kind of finds a finds a yeah. home, and he's he's a, a better injury, talent than what what people think he was. You yeah. know. Yeah, I like I like uh, I like the, the the James Conner comparison because I think if he gets in the right situation and the right team, he could go out there. He he does have I think some dual threat capabilities, um, and he's got that big that bigger body. Um, he can get you some longer runs. He can get you some catches. He can get you some touchdowns. Uh, but you know, it is it is a little. It's not a it's not a sexy pick, and I don't think it's gaining you any value. But I think it, it can be a, a really nice pick here, um, potentially moving forward. Uh, in that 10th round. So 